Hey, what's going on? It is Friday night. <laughs> Friday night, y'all. Or what, what is it? Was it R. Kelly? It's the weekend. We're about to have some fun. So, hey, uh, I wanted to talk about, I actually wanted to talk about uh, online calculators like earlier uh, in the week and it just got a really busy week. We're working on a webinar. So I want to get this topic out there. So the online calculators. They're actually pretty accurate for estimating RMR or BMR because they're pretty much mass driven, age, weight, height, sex, gender, things of that nature, okay? So why would I say, why would your online calculator be making you fat? Well, if you look at the origination of most of the equations, and I'll just name the, the, the most popular ones, you've got the Harris Benedict, um, you've got the Mifflin St. Jor is pretty, um, pretty uh, common, um, but both of those formulas came out in, like, I think that Harris Benedict came out in 1919, so literally like, you know, a long time ago, okay? And what these calculators have built in is what's called activity level. So that's how you get your total daily energy expenditure. So when you type in your height, weight, gender, and all that on the online calculators, um, that's not your energy needs, that's your energy needs at rest. What we're interested in is, hey, how many calories do I need total, right? That, that's, that's the relevant information. So what they built into the, on, the uh, calculators, like Mifflin St. Gior, um, Harris Benedict, Mueller, again, they all use the same ones, uh, is what's called activity factors. Now here's, this is why an online calculator could be making you fat, pardon the bluntness is those activity factors. And the activity factors are pretty much, like I say, they're, they're pretty much the same, but they're gonna be, you know, between 1.2 through, yeah, 1.725, okay? And that's gonna be pretty much across the board on any online calculator, those are the activity levels, okay? And 1.2 would be labeled as like, um, sedentary or office job or sitting or, or whatnot and then 1.725 would be highly active so okay what, what's the problem what, what's the problem with that well first of all I just said that the online calculators or not the online calculators but the the macronutrient based formulas or the BMR and RMR formulas were made back in the 1990s therefore that's when the activity levels were invented well let's put ourselves Back, let's get in our time machines and go back to the early 1900s when they were in, uh, estimating activity levels. What was activity like then compared to now? We were so much more, I mean, my gosh, I, I'm not a, uh, like an archaeologist or whatever, a historian, but I don't even know if cars, you know, were really commonplace for people there. We walked everywhere. So a 1.2 activity level back in 1920, meant a lot more, was still a lot more active than what it is meant to be today, okay? Or a common activity level that people will use is 1.55. That, a lot of your calculators are saying that you work out three to five times a week, okay? So number one, why the online calculators are messing things up is the activity levels. People tend to buy into higher activity levels than those were formulated for, okay? So that's one, because the activity levels were made back when society itself was just much, much, much more uh, active. The second problem is a lot of when they, the online calculators, when they define the activity level, They'll define it as using exercise, like uh, moderate exercise, high intense exercise, you know, and things of that nature. And a lot of people, they just don't want to label themselves. Like for me, I would technically be like a 1.375, okay? What that is, that's sedentary office worker. Well, I never, when I was using online calculators, I would never give myself that activity level because I'm like, no, man, I go hard in the gym. My heart's beating out of my chest. I'm killing it in the gym or I'm doing CrossFit sometimes and, you know, that, that 15 minutes, I'm dying. Okay, well, let's put things in perspective here. Back in the 1920s, yeah, they, they might not have been doing CrossFit or, or, or hitting the deadlifts real hard, but again, they were active throughout their entire day. They woke up, whether you were a housewife, um, or whether you were in business, you were walking everywhere, you were active, 
Okay, we didn't have the technology we have now. My 15 minutes or your 15 minutes of elevated heart rate in the gym or even an hour, even if you're in, in the gym for an hour, is not compensating for 18 hours or for 14 hours of activity back in 1920s when these activity levels were invented. Okay, but a lot of times out of ego, people don't want to say, oh, I'm not inactive. They don't want to label themselves that way or they don't want to label themselves as sedentary. So they just, they give themselves a little higher activity level. Oh, I'm a CrossFitter. I'm a 1.725. No, 1.725 is someone, is a factory worker who is doing manual labor all day long. Gets an hour lunch, is probably walking and, 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 and rushing through lunch, probably eating lunch, standing up you know, and then going back to manual labor. That's a 1.725, okay? Michael Phelps is a 1.725, okay? As, as are probably most Olympians. Our, another thing, as far as when these activity levels uh, were made, is gyms were very, even in like the 1940s, 1950s, 1960s, even 1970s, gyms were just starting to come around, okay? and. The modalities that you had for cardio back then, say in the 1970s, uh, 60s, you didn't have like ellipticals that do the work for you. You know, you just glide around. I'm not hating on ellipticals. I get on ellipticals all the time. I was on elliptical for 20 minutes earlier. Okay, but the, the, the cardio modalities of the day, they, you know, they were treadmills. They were the air bikes. That, that's one of the hardest things. I call it Satan's tricycle, you know, the airdyne bikes. Well, you remember those, those back before they were like reinvented into assault bikes? You know, they were the old air bikes. Well, they were hard. Uh, exercise science labs still use that, that air, airdyne bike uh, to this day to get people to peak maximum heart rate. So you pretty much had your, uh, your choice of the airdyne bike or the wind bike or the treadmill. Those two modalities tend to be a little bit tougher. They tend to get your heart rate up a little bit more. So even the gyms of the time, you were if you're gonna get on cardio because your options were so limited, it was tougher cardio. You couldn't go and do the elliptical or you know the glider or the things of that nature. Okay, so the bottom line takeaway of this is if you're using an online calculator, and again, there's so many formulas out there, but if you're using an online calculator, take a closer look at the activity level, and I would say pick the activity level that you think you are at, and then bring it down one. Hey, you can always add calories back in, okay, if you undershoot, but if you overshoot, and you put, say, two weeks into it, you're gaining body fat, you're gonna just be frustrated with the whole process. You're gonna be like, you know what? What the heck, man? You know, this this stinks, you know? Eating healthy or trying to be a healthy person stinks. But if you undershoot a little bit, okay, well, then at least you're seeing results right off the bat, and you can always add those calories back in. So just remember that those activity levels um, were built when we didn't have today's, um, today's technology, okay? Another thing, like escalators didn't exist when these activity levels were invented. Elevators probably did not exist when these activity levels were invented. Um, like super grocery stores where you can go and you can get, you know, uh, a onesie for the children and a head of lettuce all in the same place, like the Walmarts. Those didn't exist when these activity levels were made, so you were walking to two different stores. So you gotta imagine that the scientists of the day factored that in to the activity level. So hey, hopefully this makes sense. Thanks for tuning in on a late uh, Friday night. That's awesome, nourishing the brain instead of uh, out partying. Now it's all good. Uh, have a great night, everyone, and a productive weekend.